What's up YouTube, Thrift Hunter here with this week's estate sale finds. Went and bought a whole bunch more stuff. Had a pretty good week this week and found a lot of really nice high quality items. Got some pretty good prices on everything and uh, really, really happy with what I got this week. Um, I've got a lot of work to do, uh, a lot more listing to go, but I listed some of this last night. So if you guys want to check that out, um, look at my eBay store. I'll have a link in the description if you want to look at that. Uh, where most of this is, feel free to shoot me an offer on something if you're interested. Uh, so, yeah, I've got a ton of stuff. Um, I don't really know where to start. I've got all kinds of silver jewelry, um, some glass pieces, and um, some other miscellaneous. Um, here's a little uh, Mark's Tin Litho toy that I picked up, and uh, it's in pretty beat up shape. It's like a friction car. But it was neat, and uh, I think I picked this up for 20 bucks, um, which I don't know how that is with the condition, but it's something that's easy easy to ship, and you know something that is pretty collected. So neat little piece there. Um, I did get some cool um, art glass pieces. So here's one of the uh, little vases that I bought. Um, this one is marked, signed on the bottom, uh, over here. So it's uh, signed by Don Bagwell, um, which is a fairly well-known artist. Not um, not incredible, but uh, I just really liked the design on this vase, and it was twenty-three dollars. So. Um, I know that that's a signed art glass piece with uh, some good design is is going to be worth it for 23 bucks. And then I also bought this one here, really nice iridescent vase, um, nice big size in you know cobalt blue. Um, and this one's also signed on the bottom. Not sure how well. The camera's going to pick it up, but I think this one's um, Eichholt. I think it's got one of those really big um, Eichholt signatures, uh, but that's a really nice piece. Uh, this was also $23, so uh, I've got this up for like $125, I think, um, you know, worth at least $50 or $60 for sure. Um, just really nice color to it. So there's the little art glass pieces. Uh, I picked up a bayonet. So this one is an imperial um, bayonet. It's got a marking on the guard. It says M4 Imperial. This is for the uh, M1 carbine from World War II. And it's got some paint drips on it. And it's got a little bit of damage to the blade right here where there's like some little um, scratches and then like some lead or metal dropped on there or something a little bit of rust but overall I mean it hasn't been shortened the point looks nice guard looks nice handle looks nice so um, this was twenty five dollars um, saw this for twenty five bucks and just took it uh, right away because I know that pretty much any complete uh, bayonet is going to be worth at least fifty so um, we'll see how we do on this I think I've got it up for one twenty five I expect like maybe 70 or something when I'm done with it but uh, really nice little bayonet there picked up a little uh, 22 rifle scope uh, this was just uh, five bucks and it's it's made in China by this uh, seat co brand I don't know who that is it's just three to nine by 32 uh, for five bucks it's like brand new condition pretty much so Hopefully I'll be able to get 40 bucks or something for that for someone who wants that for their little 22. Uh, I did get a little uh, Roseville planter here, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's Roseville. It's got this uh, same same mark as the other Roseville piece I bought, so I'm pretty sure this is an older Roseville mark, and it's just a small planter, and I think. If you guys can help me with the pattern, I think that's magnolia, but it could be something else. Nice little green uh, planter. I picked this out, and they're like, 
well, like, that's the nicest one that we've got in the backyard. Um, and she was like, do you think it's Roseville? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure it is. And she was like, okay, well, like, ten bucks. And I'm like, you know, I re only really wanted it if it was going to be really cheap. Because these don't sell for that much. I mean, this if I get thirty bucks for this and shipping, I mean, that's going to be probably top end on it. Um, I was like, I, only, I was only really interested if it was going to be pretty cheap. And they're like, well, you know, like throw an offer at us. I'm like, I was like, I'll do five bucks if you want to get rid of it. Um, and they took the five bucks. So for five bucks, I'll buy it. It's not chipped or anything, but it's got some like little wear to it. Like some tape was on it or something. There's that. So, um, yeah, I'll finish up with some of the miscellaneous first. Here's a uh, little Lalique piece. So this is a uh, Cherub Angel. This is uh, signed by Elton John. So this was part of a charity fundraiser event. Um, and this is the 1998 Collector Society Angel of Hope. Uh, this was really expensive. This was 120 um, which is a lot more than I'd like to spend, but it, it has all of the uh, paperwork with it. It's got the outer box. I've got all the little pamphlets, so it's like really, really complete, and it's just in mint condition. So um, I picked it up. I, I researched it before I bought it and saw some that were asking like 200 250 with complete and paperwork, so that's what I've got it up for, and we'll see if it sells. Somebody who likes Elton John will probably end up buying it. Um, and then we uh, found these sunglasses here. So my girlfriend found these in the garage at an estate sale. And these are Louis Vuitton sunglasses. These are the, I think these are from like 2008 or 2009. And these are called Sokoa Daimler or Daimler or something like that. Um, you guys can look it up. But, uh, yeah, these, these are really nice sunglasses. Let's see if I can get, maybe get the mark. There you go. Louis Vuitton. And, and these look 100% um, authentic. Um, they do have, like, a little pattern in the lens. And... I don't think it's going to come up very well on the camera. There you go. A little bit of that checkerboard pattern. Um, but you can see, so right there, there's some scratches to that lens. And then there's also a decent amount of scratching to this lens right here. Um, but, you know, we got these for a dollar. So uh, anything we sell them for is going to be a profit. And... You know, without the scratches, these would probably be 400 bucks. Um, with the little scratches right there, you know, I still expect, you know, 100 200 dollars maybe for these, maybe more. We're not really sure yet, but um, we'll list these high and see if we get any offers. They're still really nice looking glasses, but yeah, they do have some pretty, pretty decent wear to them. But really cool. Um, I don't really look out for sunglasses very often, but. Um, nice little Louis Vuittons there. Alright, so I think the rest is pretty much jewelry. Um, I do have some more, like, just junk jewelry and stuff that I'm not going to bore you with. I, you know, bought some bags of junk jewelry. Um, but this is kind of all the good stuff here. Um, nice little uh, Murano glass beads. And a nice blue color. These were just... I don't know, a dollar or two dollars, but they're, they're definitely some interesting beads. Um, I do very well on nice colored beads, so bought those. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, some pink Honora pearls, 925 class, but you know, nothing too great there, but that was five bucks. Um, you know, some sterling. Little, these are like little sterling filigree flowers. Um, I did buy a decent amount of Native American jewelry this week. Uh, so these were not exceedingly cheap. But here's a 
sterling cuff bracelet. It's a pretty small size, but uh, these are still desirable, so we bought those. There's a coral one here. Nice sterling coral cuff bracelet. Again, pretty small size, but all the time with these things, you can bend them out. You just got to be careful about it, but you can um, spread these so they they fit on your wrist. It's usually not too big of a deal. And this one is a little, um, they call this petite point or just small turquoise. Little cuff there. Um, what else do I got? I bought... These earrings, these are sterling. They're uh, the MMA design mark, so it's the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, like reproduction uh, earrings. So those were neat. Oh, I really like this piece. This was a reversible uh, turquoise cross. So it's got coral and turquoise on each side there. Um, this was like $25 or $28, something like that. Um, so I picked it up. I saw it sold for like 60 or something, so I bought it. Again, like jewelry is the best because it's so easy to list this and ship this. And, you know, if I can make 10 bucks on it, it's really not much of an effort to sell. So um, I'm always picking up nice quality little pieces. You know, there's little sterling. This is a sterling ring. Uh, 12 karat HGE uh, or 12 karat gold filled little uh, flower pin there. Um, these are really neat. These are some kind of uh, a uh, Norway or Denmark cufflink. Let's see if it'll focus. And I've seen these before. Somewhere I've seen a completed listing of these. I can't find the designer right now. The mark is, is pretty small and pretty worn. But I'll look at it um, later. These are marked 830S. And they have a designer name. These were $21. Um, you know, I'll put them up for like 50 Uh, Yeah, you can see a lot of the little um, opal pieces floating around here um, these were in the garage of one of the sales that they had a bunch of like jewelry making stuff little jewelry stones um, and then I started seeing some opal and you guys know I like buying the the rough opal it's like when I see the rock collections and stuff this is pretty much the only stone that I'm really looking for um, you know, I'll look for emerald. You guys have seen me buy emerald before, like there's sapphire or something. I'll look for that, but um, majority of the time I'm looking for opal, just because it's a very common thing for people to miss, and it's also like very expensive. Um, these are, you know, nothing incredible. They're not huge um, pieces. Let me try and wet one of them, but. Let me see if any of the flashes of color will come up for you guys. So these are, are pretty um, light stones. They're very, you know, not really something that's going to be able to turn into a cabochon, really. This is more for maybe, um, like, inlay or for just, like, little chip pieces. Um but they do have, like, you can see this one has some pretty good flashes. These are rough, so they, they're not polished or, like, properly uh, gotten down to the color bar all the way yet. But, like, that's a pretty nice piece there. There's some of them that have some reds, and, and uh, that's usually one of the more rare colors. But it's kind of hard for you guys to see. When they're wet and in person, you can really see them sparkling really nice. But, um, yeah, so I bought those. Those were just um, thrown in. There is one blue one right there. little small blue, but really nice color, you know. 
So I like picking up this kind of stuff. It's just sparkly, whatever. Um, those were thrown in with uh, some of the other stuff that I bought. I, I just had them all in a, like, a little cup. And I was just like, you know, if these are more than a couple bucks, I don't really want them. Like, and he was just like, don't worry. Like, I'll just throw them in. We'll just call it even. And I'm like, all right, it's cool. So nice little flashes of color in these stones. I'll see what I do with these. Um, I may end up trying to mess with them and clean them up a little bit, do something with them, but we'll see. Uh, you know, Lang Sterling, little pin, kind of whatever, some Sterling cufflinks, some other Sterling cuff cufflinks that are, you know, nothing too great. One of those little fish ones. Um, this piece I really liked. This is a nice, um, Cloisonne enamel silver brooch and these things sell for a lot of money so a lot of uh, people will miss these at estate sales like the the ju the professionals that are pricing them will miss them but I've got that up for like ninety dollars right now and there's already a couple of watchers one sold at fifty bucks fifty or sixty bucks so I priced it a little bit higher um, just to see if there's any interest it's like perfect condition um, I think this is like a fake turquoise, just judging by the back. It looks like that halite stuff where that's kind of composite. But this um, Chinese enamel silver stuff definitely sells really well. Uh, so there's that one. Uh, here is a 14 karat cameo piece. Just a small one. It's marked K14 on the bottom. That was $4.00. So I picked that up. Uh, here is a sterling little uh, eagle and shield pin. Uh, so I think this one's for the Navy, U.S. Navy, and I think it's missing the uh, anchors or cannons or uh, that's supposed to go behind there. I think this was like a two-part piece where you'd have the that part would sit on the back here. I'm not really sure. I couldn't find another completed one like this. Um, I looked at this for a little bit and I was, didn't see any sterling marks. And I was like, ah, I don't know if it's uh, if it's going to be sterling. But it's actually marked right up here near the wingtip. Right in there it says sterling. Which is really hard to see. But this was $2. So um should be able to get at least 25 or 30 for that at least. Um, and then I did buy some earrings. So something not to skip on. Uh, a lot of the estate sale companies will price like the rings and the the bracelets and stuff really expensive. But they'll be pretty cheap on the earrings. So like these here are some really nice dangle uh, petite point earrings. And these are $10 and they are signed on the back. It's uh, GDM on the back. But those are like really nice. Those are like $30, $35, maybe more, just like pretty easily. Here's some sterling uh, amethyst tax coat. These are 980 silver. Didn't see a maker's mark on them yet, but some nice little. Those also, the amethyst tax coat stuff really does well. Um, some, you know, the little coral. These are like little shadow box stud earrings. Again, like this is the kind of stuff that people want to go with their uh, bracelets and, and necklaces and stuff. Six bucks. I mean, that's not a bad deal. And then another pair of turquoise shadow box ones. These were 12 or... I don't know if she charged me 17 or 12. But those are really nice as well. You know, a little sterling stuff here. I get tons of this kind of stuff. Um little milk glass this is uh signed miriam haskell two dollars um not the best piece but not bad and then another milk glass uh this one's hobe and then some little pearls it has a broken clasp but i'm pretty sure that one right there is white gold so for two dollars i'll pick it up there's a just a little what 
little watch by with some kick fm k something little radio station giveaway or something raffle not worth much but that was two dollars as well and uh yeah the last couple of things here um we've got this this is a sterling 950 sterling lipstick tube with a pop-out mirror so I'll show you kinda have to be careful how this comes out there we go so it's a little little mirror that pops out and it's got some old lipstick gunk in there but it's marked on the back 950 silver right there kind of dirty but uh, nice piece these I gotta be careful with how this thing closes I don't want to break it I'll fix it later but nice little sterling piece that was um, nine dollars and it's 50 grams of silver so a good deal on that one I decided to pick up this a little um, little antique watch it's not running you know which is usually my main issue is most of the time watches aren't running but co my, all my collectors don't really seem to care like if it's a good watch they buy it regardless if it's if it's working or not but this was uh, 30 bucks and when I saw this I was like eh, that's kinda cool but then when I looked on the back it's like oh it is actually um, dated on the back here August 1935 distinguished service so I found a couple of um, listings for these people are asking like two hundred dollars you know for maybe a little bit better running condition um, it's a neat watch but I'm not sure how much value it has still pretty cool it's old the Chevrolet little dealership you know this would be great for like a little display case at a dealership or something so um, for thirty dollars not bad not bad deal at all um, and then what else have I got yeah a little sterling you know marcosite piece there and then here's a piece that I was kinda of really excited about um, it wasn't twenty four dollars I just kinda of threw it in this bag this was uh, ten dollars actually and it's a Rolex watch face so it's a Oyster Perpetual uh, Day Date watch face, an original one. And I looked this up and checked it out, and it is authentic. Sorry, my, it's kind of going to be hard to focus on something like this. But this is um, basically from like 1989, 1990, uh, Rolex Oyster Perpetual. This is the Champagne Tapestry Dial in a uh, 28 millimeter so it would be better if this was like 33 mil 33 millimeter it'd be worth more like the 33 plus millimeter watch faces are worth like 500 bucks um, this one like to actually for sold listings maybe around 100 125 is probably reasonable for this um, I've got it listed at like 300 bucks right now um, and there is people watching it, so it's in good condition. And if you really need a replacement or you want to go back to original or you've got, they made this in three different colors. So if you want to have all three different colors, maybe it's worth more to you. So it's a cool piece. Okay, last, last thing is these pens. So who knows what these are? These are cross pens pen and pencil set I've bought and sold probably a hundred of these 
and so when I was digging through the jewelry, I saw these in there, and I grabbed them, and I laid out the jewelry that I wanted. It was with this, like, Miriam Haskell stuff, like, two, three dollar little baggies, and the Rolex was in there, too. She was like, ten bucks for the Rolex. That was what I was really interested in. These, are, I didn't really care. I, I figured she was going to say five bucks. Everybody always says five bucks for these things, and she goes, they're forty dollars a piece, and I was like, what? Like, what What do you mean $40 a piece? These are worth, like, you know, $2, $3 a piece. And she goes, well, no, they're they're gold. They're 14 karat gold. And I'm like, oh, no, no, like, they're, they're gold filled. Like, they're not. And she goes, no, no, like, they're 14 karat gold. And I'm like, nah. And uh, so I look at them. And uh, sure enough, on the clip there, it says 14 karat. And I look at the marking on here, and this is gonna be like ridiculous to try and show you guys because it won't even come up when I try and take pictures. Uh, it's rough. You can check out my eBay store if you really want to see the mark. Uh, a little bit there. So it just says 14K gold. Doesn't say 14 20 gold doesn't say 14 gold filled it just says 14 karat gold and on the clip it also says 14 karat on the clip there so I was like okay my bad 40 bucks a piece I'll take them uh, so yeah I bought these two uh, little pen and pencil set this is called the cross executive pen and pencil set in solid 14 karat gold there is roughly 350 to 400 dollars in scrap gold maybe more um, it's kind of hard to determine because obviously it's part like pen and then part gold so um, it's hard to get an accurate weight on how much actual gold's in here but i've got these listed for about 800 dollars um, i've already turned down an offer for 400 so we'll see how these do, but these cost me eighty dollars and uh, are worth you know five hundred, six hundred bucks, hopefully. Uh, so that was a really, really good score. It was my best score this week, and I've got all this other stuff. So if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.